Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have a little fleet of Tiny Hawks here. I've got the Tiny Hawk 2, I've got the Tiny Hawk S, and I've got the Tiny Hawk Freestyle, which I just got, and I'm super excited to try out. Now, I can tell you if you're new to flying uh, these kind of quads that are bind and fly and have to be set up in uh, beta flight, then it can be a little intimidating and a little bit difficult. I had some trouble actually uh, the first time I did this, did a lot of research, watched a lot of YouTube videos, uh, and what I thought I'd do is compile it all into one video and show you how to set any of these three up. They're all very similar, and so if you can set up one, you should be able to set up the others. So stay tuned and we'll check it out. Now, if you're looking to start with something really easy, the Easy Pilot from Tiny Hawk is a great choice because it comes already bound with a radio, it comes with a, a goggles, it comes with everything you need. But if you want to take the next step up to a Tiny Hawk S or a Tiny Hawk 2 or a Tiny Hawk Freestyle, you're going to have to bind it to a radio. And to do that, you need to learn how to bind to FR Sky or Free Sky. I have a Free Sky radio here that I like a lot. This is the uh, X light, and I like it because it's small. It's got a video game style um, setup, and it's really easy to take with me. So the convenience of having this in my backpack in a little case is really nice. There's a few things about it that are kind of unusual that you need to know. Number one, it takes these um, 1S batteries, and these batteries are not off the shelf. They're something that you have to search for, and I can put a link in the description as to where you can get these guys. They don't even have a um, little bump on the positive side. They're flat on both ends, so you just need to pay attention to the little uh, indicator that tells you what's positive, which side is positive, and which side is negative on these batteries. And they're actually a little bit challenging to get in the first time. I didn't realize that these little things right here twist these little ends twist and then the battery fits right inside there like that. The negative side out, positive side in. And then you just have to find the sweet spot and twist this guy on to get it back on like that. Um, that was something that I, took me a little while to figure out. Um, and then you have to get a special charger so you can charge these. But if you're going to fly with Fat Sharks or any other goggle that use one of these type of um, batteries. So they have a 1S battery but it takes two of them inside and you need a charger, special charger to charge those as well. But the charger I have will charge both these and the batteries that are in here so I can use the same charger. So that was one thing that was kind of a little bit of a learning curve. But the bigger thing was using beta flight and also using um, setting up your switches and such in your, in your uh, remote control. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and turn on your remotes before you even turn on the power of your uh, drone. You're going to turn on your remote, and I'm going to go ahead and um, push the button in and say create model. And I'm going to name the model. So model name right here. I'll go ahead and call this guy. I think I'm just going to put F for freestyle. All right, I'm out, of, I'm out of spaces, so Tiny Hawk F is what we're going to call this guy. All right, so I've got a name for it, which is great. So I'll go ahead and push the button there, and I'll move back out of this. And where I need to go is to the bind button, because I want to bind this quad, Tiny Hawk, to, the, um, to this radio. Now, one thing that's interesting, uh, this Tiny Hawk is D, set up for D8, I believe. So D16 won't work. So I switch it over to D8 and go back down. So now I come down here to the bind. You can see where it says bind is, that's, uh, that's blinking. Okay, so actually on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle, the bind button is actually pretty easy to get to, which is nice. It is right here. It's this little black guy right here. So and you can feel it when you press down on it. It just, you hear that clicking. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's clicking in and out. It's got a little spring-loaded thing. So that's nice that this one's so easy to get to. Now the trick to put this thing in bind mode is to hold down the bind button while you put the battery in. Now in the case of one battery, that's not too bad because you're only putting in one battery. In this one, you have to put in two batteries. So I'm gonna put one in, 
go ahead and get it in there. And then I'm going to take the other one and get it ready to go in. Get it right here on the edge. So hold down the bind button with this screwdriver. So this doesn't actually stop beeping uh, when it's bound. It just keeps going. So the best thing to do is to restart it and see if you got it in to bind, bound or not. Here's Betaflight. Now I'll go ahead. You don't. You shouldn't need your batteries plugged in when you plug the quad into um, into your computer. I'll go ahead and take those off. One really, really important thing to note, though, not all USB cables will work. So this is a USB uh, micro USB on this end and a USB A on the other. And I only have USB C on my computer, so I'm going to use this adapter. But I had a lot of trouble with the first USB cable that I tried to use. And so if you're having a lot of trouble, it could be your uh, USB cable. So try a few different ones before you rule that out. So, and I know this one works, so I put a sticker on it so I could remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the USB slot on the Tiny Hawk uh, Freestyle. And then I'll hit connect. And the way you can tell it's working is when you pick up the quad, you should be able to see it uh, moving on the screen. So I'm connected to it in uh, Betaflight. So the way you can tell you've succeeded at binding is you should be able to do the pitch, yaw, throttle, and roll, and you should see them happen all here in the receiver tab in Betaflight. If, if, it's, uh, if it's showing up um, that the remote is controlling it, then it's actually, they're talking. Okay, so if you do have trouble getting the quad to bind uh, using the button and plugging the batteries in, there is a command line interface, which is the CLI here that you can type in. It is, you just type down here, uh, bind underscore RX underscore SPI. And when you hit enter, your quad will go into bind mode. And so if you can't get it to go into bind mode via the uh, button, that's another way you can do it. Now I'm not gonna actually hit enter because I. I've already bound mine and it's working. Now another gotcha that can be impede binding is whether you're in D8 or D16 mode. In order to get it working, I had to be in D8, which you go to your model, uh, you select your model that you're working on. So in this case, mine's the Tiny Hawk F for freestyle. And then you scroll down here to your mode and you'll see you have choices between D8 and D16. So Right here under mode D8, this is, if I push it in, I can move to D16, or this LR12, which I don't know what that is, but you wanna be in D8, channels one through eight, and then that will allow you to bind, because by default, your uh, quad is in FR Sky D, which is the uh, D8 mode. FR Sky X is the D16 mode, which I believe you can switch to if you wanted to, but I've never been able to get it to work. So FR Sky D and D8 mode on the radio are what you need to be in in order to get it to bind. All right, so again, I can tell mine is bound because when I go to the receiver, I can move it all around and I can see things actually happening. Now, the next thing you have to do is set up your switches. Now, by default, your pitch, roll, throttle, and yaw are all already set up on the first is your roll, the second is your pitch, which is forward and backwards, third is your yaw, fourth is your throttle. So I'm moving all of those right now. Um, this little thing over here, channel map, T-A-E-R, stands for uh, throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the order of these things over here, but you can see T for throttle, T, uh, A for aileron, which is roll, that's what causes the craft to roll, E for elevator, and R for uh, rudder, which is your yaw. One, two, three, four. So those are the first four channels, your first four channels in the radio. Um, that's a default thing, and you shouldn't have to change that, and that will show up. But the other things you want to be able to do is change between flight modes, like acro versus stabilized versus horizon. You want to be able to change into a different, um, uh, set, turn your beeper on and off. You want to be able to arm it, etc. 
So in order to get to my switches, what I want to do is go into my model, go up to the setup, and then you see right now I'm on 2 of 12. And I'm going to go to 3 of 12, 4 of 12, 5 of 12. And this is the inputs right here that I need to work with. So input number 5 is one of these switches up here. And I believe it's this one right here. Uh, it might be this one. But what you want to do is go ahead and get to it, navigate to it like I just did. Name it something... Uh, that makes sense. So I'm going to name it arm. That's going to be my arm switch. Oh, and that's actually switch D. So when I switch this over here, you can see it turns to switch D. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for number six, which is going to be acro versus stabilized. So I'm going to call this one, uh, I'm going to call it mode actually. MOD because I only have three letters. So I'll call it M because it's flight mode. Okay, oh, I don't want that capitalized. And I think I can actually add an E here. So add E. All right, so now I'm going to go down, and this is going to be this switch, which is switch two. So it is switch two, so I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. And finally, a very handy thing to set up is the buzzer. So I'll go ahead and uh, go down here to the beeper, and I will call this one... Uh, buzz, B-U-Z. And then... And that's good. And then that's going to be... Uh, this guy over here. So go down to source, switch C. So now hit there. So now I've got uh, get back out of this. So once you've created your inputs, what you want to do is go to the right, to the next menu, to the mixer, and you want to actually assign each of these to an auxiliary. Um, so this is going to be aux1 because this is going to be the first thing that shows up in beta flight so I'll go here and I'll go uh, a u x 1 and that's going to be my arm Again, that's it's this switch right here. All right, now channel six is going to be, whoops, A U. X two and that's going to be uh, this switch right here. So I go to switch and then I hit it. All right, so it's switch 
B. And then finally I'm going to set the buzzer over here on this guy, which is this one up here on the upper left. And to do that, I'm going to go back and I'll go down to channel 7 and I'll go in and call this one AUX3. And I'll set that and then I'll go down here and I'll say this is going to be this switch. Oh, right, the switch. Oh, there it is. Switch. And it'll be this switch right here. All right, good to go there. So now that's all good. So I'm going to back out of this. And you can see right there, basically, I've assigned uh, channels one through seven. One through four were already done, but five, six, and seven are ARM uh, rate or mode and buzzer. All right, so now that I've done all that, I'm going to back out to the Tiny Hawk. You can see right here for ARM, when I flip this switch up and it goes into the range right here in this yellow, it's armed and I was able to move this around to adjust it. When I switch from the, right now I'm in angle mode. If I switch to the middle, I'm in horizon, which is in this range. And when I switch to here, I'm in air mode, which is my three switches. And then my beeper is either on or off, just a two way thing. So I'm gonna save that. So that's basically it. Um, the hardest part really is I think um, mapping those switches to the different auxiliaries. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense. Now I'm gonna take it up for my first maiden flight with this thing. Thank you.